welcome to our section on using measuring instruments. We use measuring instruments all the time in our everyday life. If you're doing science, medicine, engineering, you're constantly using more unfamiliar ones. But actually, there may be familiar ones that we haven't quite been using correctly. So this will help us get to grips with that. So let's get started then. Here's a typical measuring instrument. Uh, I've chosen this one because it has lots of the features that we see in other instruments. We can see that it has some kind of symbol on it. That's what we call the unit. That's what this instrument measures in. So this is an ammeter because it has a capital A on it for amps. And it measures current. Meters have other basic features. If we look elsewhere on the dial here, we can see that it has a numbered scale. And as well as that, we need to know where we are on that scale so it also has a pointer. And so you find that lots of instruments take this form. It's very familiar. So let's talk now about scales and divisions. So when you look at a meter, you want to know exactly where you are on it. Here's a typical scale from a meter. And every meter will have something like this, some kind of uh, markings and some kind of numbering. So the main scale is often divided up into smaller subdivisions. And it's these subdivisions that help us to read it correctly. So the first thing you should do is identify uh, the value belonging to one of those single subdivisions. Looking more carefully at this scale, we see that this 5 here is actually made up of 10 smaller divisions. So we need to do a calculation here to figure out what one of those smaller divisions is made of. So we've got 10 of them uh, across 5. So we divide the 5 by the 10 parts and we get a value of 0 0.5. So each one of the subdivisions is worth 0 0.5. 5 here divided by the 10 bits gives us 0 0.5. So that's what each little tick is worth. And this calculation should be done every time you meet a new meter so that you read it correctly. Here we have a dial type meter reading in kilovolts. But it could just as easily be some kind of measurement of newtons, some kind of measurement of milliamps. Or indeed, the numbered scale could change in order to give us different kinds of amounts there. So, for example, we could be reading something that goes 0, 2, 4, 6, 8, 10, 12, and we need to do the little calculation each time we come across that. So let's look. We've got 2 milliamps, 10 divisions, and that means that each little division there is worth 0.2 of a milliamp. And each time we look at a meter, we're going to be looking at a simple calculation in our head like that to work out what each of the small divisions is worth. Here we have a 0 to 30 volt voltmeter, and I've set up five possible readings here. So before we do anything, we need to do a little calculation to check what each small division is worth. And it's 5 volts, 10 divisions, so each little small division is worth half a volt. So we're going to try and read these values A, B, C, D, E. You might want to stop the video and try them for yourself now before we fill them in. Looking at A here we can see that it's eight half ticks up from zero or two half ticks from five. So eight half ticks is four and uh, two ticks before five is two halves, which is one before five, which is four volts. So 4.0, there's a reason we'll talk about later uh, that we write a zero in there. B now, it's uh, four half ticks before 10, that makes it eight or six half ticks above five. Uh, C there is exactly 10 volts. D is, it's on a half, 13, that's like 14, so this must be 13.5. E, E is an example of where we have to pick the closest tick and you can see there it's between 18 and 19 so it's closest to the 18.5 volt marker there it's not closer to the 19 so we have to pick the 18.5 
marker, that's the one we pick out. Now, some of you may be looking at this and going, well, that's actually about 18.7. And in some cases, it may be appropriate to make an estimate like that. But mostly, we work to the accuracy of the instrument, which means we pick the nearest tick to the pointer. And in this case, the nearest tick was 18.5 volts. Now we're going to look at a few scales and just measure out what each small division is worth. Now this first one is done for you. We've done this before. We've got five split in ten parts. So each one there is worth 0 0.5. Here's an even easier one with five split into five ticks. So each division here just equals one. In this one, 10 divisions equals 2, therefore each division is 0 0.2. And in this final one, there are 5 ticks for each one unit on the main scale, so each division is 0 0.2 also. We've got two different scales there, but the same actual small division. This first one we're going to count up in half, so that is 0, 0.5, 1, 1.5, 2, 2.5, 3, 3.5, 4, 4.5, 5. Over here we're counting in 1s, 1, 2, 3, 4, 5. Over here we're counting in point two, so 0, 0, 0.2, 0, 0.4, 0.6, 0.8, 1, 1 1.2, 1.4, 1.6, 1.8, 2. Over here we're counting in point twos again, 0, 0 0.2, 0 0.4, 0 0.6, 0 0.8, 1. And then we can put markers on these and decide where they are. So that there, again we count up to it. 5, 5.5, five 6, 6.5, 7, that's 7.5. Over here, that's 5, 6, 7, 8. Here, let's count them. Well, 0 0.2 down from 4 and 0 0.4 down from 4. So that's 3.6. Let's count up. 2, 2.2, 2, 4, 6, 8, 3, 3.2, 4, 6. So that's 3.6. And in the last one here, stick a marker there. And we're counting up in 2s. 1. 1.2, 1.4, 1.6. Let's try some more. Here, 10 ticks equals 50, so each tick is worth 5. In this one, 10 ticks equals 20, so each tick is worth 2. Here, 5 ticks equals 10, therefore each tick is worth 2. And in this last one, 5 ticks equals 20, therefore each tick must be 4. We can look at these scales and count in the units. So here we have 0, 5, 10, 15, 20, 25, 30, 35, 40, 45, 50, etc. And here, where we're going in 2s, 0, 2, 4, 6, 8, 10, 12, 14, 16, 18, 20. Over here we're in 2s, 0, 2, 4, 6, 8, 10. Over here we're in 4s, 0, 4, 8, 12, 16, 20. And so each time you get a scale like that, you will be able to count in the small divisions and figure out where you are on the scale. So we get a pointer there. We can tell that that is 65. Get a pointer here. We can see that that is 20, 2, 4, 6, 8, 10. So that's exactly 30. Get a pointer here. That's 10 plus 2 plus 2. So that's 14. Uh, get a pointer, say, here on this one. Um, that's 40 plus 4 plus another 4, which is 48.
Now we're going to talk about uncertainties, which are commonly referred to as errors. Now this doesn't mean we've made a mistake, it just means that when we record a value, how far out could that value be when we write it down? And to explain this, I'm going to take you back to one of our previous examples. If you remember, we had a set of values A, B, C, D and E. And in particular, we said that E had to be chosen as 18.5 because 18.5 was the closest tick on the instrument to where the pointer was. So understanding the reason for the choice of 18.5, if we go more than halfway across, then this pointer will be closer to 19. And if we go more than halfway back, then the pointer will be closer to 18. So it's within half a tick of 18.5 and that's why we call it as 18.5. So I suppose you could say that any pointer that's on 18.5 has to be within half a small tick of the value 18.5. So we could write the value down as 18.5 plus or minus half a tick. And since uh, a tick here is worth 0 0.5, half a tick is worth 0 0.25. So 18.5 plus or minus half a tick is going to be 18.5 plus or minus 0 0.25. Now this value of 0 0.25 that we have over here is called the uncertainty in our reading. Consequently, we say that the uncertainty in any instrument is half of the smallest division on the instrument. And this then makes it doubly important that we look up what the smallest division on the instrument is when we begin to read it, because it allows us all to, to write down the uncertainty in any reading that we are recording. Now, there is another school of thought that says that basically when uh, the user adjusts the zero on the instrument before using it to make sure that it's zeroed, that this half a division error occurs also there. And so there's another school of thought that say you should always take the error in an instrument to be one whole division a half where the pointer is, and a half where the zero is. So there's a second view that you should take a whole unit, a whole small division to be your error in your result. So you'll see this uh, treated both ways, and uh, often the exam boards will allow you to use either, but obviously you shouldn't mix and match. So your teacher may tell you to use one division as your error, um, and uh, another teacher in another school may suggest that you just use half a division. Uh, that's totally up to you, but you must be consistent. Most boards will allow you to use either, but you need to be consistent and always use one or the other. Okay. So as I say, if you're only thinking about the error at the pointer here, you use half a division. If you're including a possible error at the zeroing end, you use one division. Thanks for stopping by and taking the time to learn how to read meters properly. And I hope that this little primer speeds up your laboratory work in the future. Thanks for watching.